So we've got a nice warm ball again now. So we're going to take this back to the front of the court after those volleys and do something, practice those drop shots again, do something that I call the drop shot matrix because I'm going to work through a full variety of drop shots in the front half, basically until it goes too cold again that the drops aren't really realistic because every shot is fooling me. Every shot is a good one because the ball's like a stone and I'm kind of getting a false sense of security about my drops. I always try and practice those drops when the ball is warm so that it has the element of you know challenging me and more realistic as, as most realistic as possible okay so i'm going to start weirdly enough with cross court drops before going on to a straight drop and the reason for this is follow through again that's the theme on a cross court drop you can let the follow through go a lot more because you've got a wider angle and you can really point that racket towards that angle towards the nick and the target on a straight drop again we can be a little bit confused a little bit protective of the sidewall thinking well tentative with the follow through because of that sidewall the worry about it popping up so always practice a cross court drop first personally to allow that freedom and hopefully i'll put that into play when i come onto the straight drops So I might do about 20 of each one to progress through before the ball goes cold, but in this I'll just demonstrate kind of a handful so we can progress through the matrix, okay? So cross drops first. So I'm really looking, so I'm extending that follow through, I'm aiming for the nick with the edge of my racket, really trying to play this with my fingers, soft in my lower half, I'll change the angle up a bit. I think that's important when you practice drops is you don't just get comfortable with the same angle I mix it up and mix up the footwork as well so take one with an open stance oh I'm happy with that one so now I'll go on to the straight drop and hopefully the freedom of follow through will help It's a good one. Of course, I'll do that on my forehand side as well. I'm then going to progress to the volley. Okay, so I'll demonstrate this one on the forehand. I'll start with cross court again first. Temptation on this one is to go for the big heave ho cross court nick, but I'm trying to work the strings, work the swing. Ah! Take it personally when you hit the tin. Better. And then I might progress. Oh dear, that was awful. It's better. And now straight, now that I've grooved my follow through. My favourite shot, this one. Always remember to practice your strength in a solo. Lost my footwork a bit there. So I'm trying to time the last step with the swing. Oh, it's a bad one. Better. Okay, I'm now going to piece the sides together. So we come back onto the bounce. I'm going to go one cross court, one straight. So, cross, straight. Cro combining both sides, cross. Obviously, I'll do this on the volley as well. So I'm working side to side, getting the footwork involved. One thing I advocate on the drops is keeping plenty of space between your feet so we never get in here too upright, get nice and low to the ball. Lastly, on the volleys, I'm going to spin that round. So the feed will be one straight, one cross, and I will hit everything straight. It's the last one. Okay, so straight feed. Next one, cross court feed. Straight feed. Working across the T line. If you really wanted to up the pace, just cross. So there, and then across again. So you're perfecting that movement 
across the tee, last couple. Ah, always finish on a good one. Could be here all day. It's better, finish on a good one. Yes, can't finish on a tin, that's a big no-no, even if it means the people on the court next are gonna have to wait a minute.